The YouTube Annotation Editor is a great tool for making a quick adjustment to one of your videos, and it can be used to add an element of interactivity to those videos. Annotations are really just layers that you add on top of your video for messages or some clickable interactive items. Any video you wish to annotate must first live in your YouTube account video manager, which is where I am. With the new iOS 7 update, the process for navigating among apps looks a little different than when I made this video, but I don't have time to redo it, so I'm just going to add some notes using the annotation editor. There are two ways to access the annotation editor. If I click on the video, you will see a link to open the annotation editor in the player just beneath it. Or if I return to my video manager, I can click the edit button and then find the annotation link in the tabs across the top to open the annotation editor. The annotation editor plays my video and shows a timeline beneath it. And I can use this timeline to play through the video and find just the right spot where I need to add a note. This is where I need to add a note about iOS 7. So I'm going to pause the video in the player and use the Add Annotation button to add a note. Notes in speech bubbles act pretty much the same, but one has a speech bubble tail and the other does not. For this example, I'm going to choose Note. You can see a note icon added to my timeline and an area for me to add my text. I can resize the note and move it to the desired location on my video. I can make some customizations to the text size, color, and fill color, but my options are pretty limited. I can also adjust the duration or how long this annotation is displayed during my video. And the link option allows me to link this note to another video. So if I had a similar video, my note could say, click here to watch a video about blank. And if somebody clicked on the note or annotation, it would take them to another video. But the link option only links one video to another video on YouTube. You can't link to a website or another online resource, which is a bummer. The link tool would be a lot more useful to me if it did that. Let's explore some other annotation types. In addition to text and speech bubbles, you can add titles, which are nice for adding large text. And the Spotlight tool allows you to draw attention to key areas in the video. To edit an annotation, I just need to click on it in my timeline, and I can use the trash can to delete it. I can also edit an annotation by using the Edit Existing Annotation drop-down menu to select the annotation I wish to alter. I will show you the Label Annotation tool in just a minute, but this video has been updated the way I want it, so I'm going to click the Publish button to save my changes. I haven't uploaded a different version of my video, rather I've just added some new layers to my existing video. So my video still has the same URL or address, which is nice because then I don't have to update any links that are directing people here. But when others watch my video, my new messages will pop up. Here is that spotlight annotation. And here is that note annotation. In addition to using the YouTube Annotation Editor for notes and written enhancements to a video, you can use the tool to make your videos more interactive. For example, I can add the label annotation to a part of my video and ask users to predict or guess as to what they're seeing. So, do you know what famous Colorado location this is? Hover over the waterfall on the right to see. When you hover over a label annotation, it reveals the text I have added to it. The annotation tool is an easy way to quickly add notes and communicate with your students. You can add pop-up notes to remind students to take out their notes. You can add speech balloons to put in some more information that you forgot to mention when you made the screencast. Or you can add labels and spotlights to add some of those interactive elements to your video.